Hey, what's up fam? So it's Black Hippie here, and this is uh, my boy, uh, Bowie. He's a jungle boa constrictor imperator. And uh, anywho, today there was a request to see like how I built my uh, enclosure for my uh, Brazilian rainbow boa. And so we're gonna go over that. But before we do that, it's gonna kind of do an update on Bowie here and how he's doing. If you're interested, tap in. So today we're gonna to talk about is how I built my Brazilian rainbow boas enclosure. Uh, someone requested that, and so I figured why not do it. He's in shed right now, so I'm not gonna be handling her, but I just thought it'd be kind of cool to take out Bowie here. In the meantime, <laughs> so he's a cool dude, um, definitely getting bigger, under year old under three feet he's probably about he's under two two and a half feet for sure he's probably about two feet and some inches or so but yeah he's good um you know it's funny if i don't handle him for a couple days and i take him out he's more nervous than he typically is when i'm handling him more often so that's kind of a, a note <laughs> um, to be consistent with your handling but anyway so he's been really good um his coloring is changing so much i swear it changes like almost like daily dude like um you can kind of see his tail, this really kind of creamy color. There you go. Um, you know, it's also black, it's coming really black too. So she's changing a lot. I'm sorry, he's changing, I keep calling her she. He's changing and it's uh, quite fascinating to see that. So I was trying to show you guys, but I just want to get him to get comfortable first. It takes him a second usually. So he's kind of warming up a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, you can kind of check him out, he's really beautiful. So jungle morph, and yeah, I mean like when I first got him, he looked so different, um, you know. So that's one of the cool thing about boas and some of their morphs is that they change. IMG specifically, oh man, if you know about IMGs, IMGs are really cool. So IMGs get really dark to a point where they're just like all black, and so um, those things are really cool. <laughs> and those are also boa constrictors or boa constrictor imperators. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna try to show you her tail, his tail, there you go. All right, so you kind of see it a little better. I never like to like uh, stress them out. So I don't usually like kind of like pull them apart and that kind of stuff, I just let them kind of do their thing. But one of the cool things about boas is that they're so curious. So, you know, the hard part, I would say the hardest part usually is kind of getting them out of their enclosure. Well, once you kind of master the technique, I do a kind of a scoop. So I always kind of put my hand behind them. You know, I never put my hand hovering on top of their head, nor did I put my hands in front of their face because I feel like that's an easy way to get tagged. Um, it's not that <clears throat> it's not that they're being mean or they want to hurt you. It's just a defense mechanism, you know? Uh, so just be careful of that. But if you give them nothing to fear, then they're not going to bite you, like, you know? But that's the cool thing is that they're just so curious about everything. So what I'll do, uh, it's called redirecting. So if I would ever notice like, you know, he's getting, coming at me or he's looking like he's gonna strike or something like that, which doesn't happen really, but um, I'll do something to distract him. So putting in front of a light, then he chills out and he's really curious about that light. Um, it could be just like kind of putting his face in front of a dresser and then he'll try to climb onto that dresser and he's no longer like seeing me as a threat, which, uh, which works really well. Um, I would say, but here he is in all his glory. So yeah, if you have any questions on Bowie here, put in the comments below, let me know. But yeah, he's doing really well. I'm so excited to see him grow. Uh, he's a Central American boa, so he's not gonna get really that big. I'm probably assuming he'll max out right at that like five foot range. Um, Kiki, my albino, she's a Colombian, so she'll probably get a little bit bigger, um, also thicker. Um, but yeah, that's one thing I like about Central Americans is that they don't get that big, you know. But they do reach an impressive size, but they're n not anywhere near the size of like a Retic or a Burmese <laughs> or even your Central, I'm sorry, or even your Colombians, right? So the Colombians are bigger. Obviously, the boa constrictor constrictor is like, even bigger than Colombians, but you know. I'm gonna go ahead and put him back up, and then we're gonna get started on, uh, you know, pretty much like how I build out, how I built out my Brazilian rainbow boas enclosure. Okay, so this is all the equipment. Uh, one of the heat pad, um, the thermostat, background. Uh, I already put the tent on the in the, in the enclosure already. 
makes a tent on both sides. Um, I didn't want to show all that, so that's like a little too much. Um, I got digital gauges. Uh, I got two of these to put in my other tanks who currently are using the uh, the dial ones. I got some those. Um, I need some more of this. This is like great for like cleaning uh, chlorhexidine. Um, two small hides, some greenery, and of course, the magic, right? Bedding, or Cypress Mulch, AKA Soap Street. Okay, so this is my Brazilian Rainbow Bows enclosure. Uh, this is an 18 by 18 by 18, so that's in inches, right? So 18, uh, 18 inches across, uh, 18 inches deep, and then 18 inches high. All right, so um, what I personally do is I'll get like fake plants from, you know, a local reptile store and I put that on there. As you can see, uh, so as you can see in here, um, you know, little section, little caps so they can stick right to the side of your enclosure. Also notice how the side of the enclosure is really dark. Um, so I tent, I tent all the sides. So the sides are tented on my enclosure and it's really easy to do that. All you gotta do is go right to, um, all you have to do is go right to like Lowe's, you know, we'll have it. And all it is is like house window tent. And it's really easy to apply, it takes no time. Uh, and so the back, the background, what I'll do, as you see in the background of the enclosure, is I'll just like get a background from like an aquatic store, you know, uh, the local reptile store that I personally go to, uh, they sell fish. So they have like aquatic backgrounds. <laughs> so that's what I do, it's cheap, it's pretty easy. It's about eight to 10 bucks really, or probably even less than that. You just like cut out, you know, a piece where you obviously, I know the size of my enclosure. And so I just bought a big chunk and um, it has double sided. So it has a different background on the other side, which is kind of cool if you want to change up your look. Um, anyway, so the lights that I have on top right here, this light is called, this light right here, it's called a stingray light. I don't want to flash the camera, but okay, yeah. So it looks like that. It's an LED light, plus you can make it like a blue light if you want. So, you know. You can do it that way. You can make it a blue light or you can just make it like day. So um, I personally don't leave lights on all day. Um, only time I really have the lights on is if like I'm viewing them, whatever. So usually lights are off. Um, and yeah, so I also have this right here on top of the screen. This is a cut piece of plexiglass that um, I put on half of the screen. And what that does is it helps keep the humidity in. As you know, this is Brazilian Rainbow Boa. So their humidity needs to be like 99%. I'm not even joking. If you look right here, 99%. So, anyways, um, so yeah, and then I'll also get like a grapevine that stick or this stick that you see. This is a cured um, grapevine. And then a water dish. And now, so like the substrate, um, what I do is I do a blend. So, this is a mix, 50 50 mix of cypress mulch and um, jungle mix. That's the name of it, it's called Jungle Mix. Um, and so I'll just mix that up 50-50, and I'll just like, you know, mix it all up, put a little water in there, and then mix it up. And then, so what you see right here, this green moss, this is called terrarium moss. So terrarium moss, I also pick up at my local pet store or the local reptile store. Anytime I'm getting them like rats or mice, whatever, I'll pick some up for, for uh, Skittles here because her enclosure needs to be so humid. Um, and so this mix with this, uh, terrarium moss it just does a great job like i don't have to miss this enclosure down every day like or all day anyways my point is like using this particular substrate mix with the terrarium moss it makes it way easier for you like uh i don't really have to deal with um you know spraying down misting down my enclosure all the time i usually do it like in the morning and that's what you kind of see this is left over from the morning um and i don't even do that every day um, I really didn't even need to do it today, but it's just one of those things I do just to be sure if like, if I leave for, you know, a couple of hours or so, just so that if the humidity does, the humidity could drop a little bit. So I always do that in the morning and that way it kind of keeps it, keeps that from happening. Obviously you need a heat mat. So I have on her hot side over there, uh, it's an under the tank heat pad. And then this is her cool side. So just another hide. So she has two hides, one hide there, one hide over there. Uh, this hide, like I said, uh, is the cool side, hot side over there. Hot side, you don't want past 85 degrees. I keep mine on 30, I'm sorry, 
in Fahrenheit. So you don't want your hot side to be over 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Like that could kill your Brazilian rainbow boa. So I like to keep it at 83 max and you definitely need a thermostat. So that's my thermostat right there. As you can see, it's set to 82. That's the max Fahrenheit that, you know, the heat pad will, will get to. And right now it's at 81.5. So it'll usually kind of drop down and then go back up a little bit. So, you know, right now she's actually in the hot side, on her hot side. Don't even wanna bother her because like I said, she's in shed. So I'm trying to make this video as quick as I can. <laughs> it's a lot to go over. But yeah, so another thing too is what's called a hydrometer or hygrometer. I always mix that up. Anyways, so, you know, I always prefer the digital ones with the prongs because I think it's gonna give you the best readings. So you can see here, there's a, the prong right here in the tank and this what this is what help reads the humidity in this tank so i like to kind of keep in the soil just so that it's able to kind of give an accurate reading and then another one back there is the temperature gauge you can kind of see it's a prong right there and so that just gives me a uh, like i guess like the most accurate readings um for my enclosure so <sighs> it's a lot of information <laughs> Um, and yeah, that's pretty much like it with my enclosures. So we covered the background, we covered blacking out the, the sides, we covered, you know, giving them stuff to kind of climb on. I like, you know, kind of all my setups or all my snakes, they all have like very, they all have the same setup for the most part. Uh, and yeah, so then give them, you know, some greenery to climb on, uh, obviously a water dish that allows them to kind of fully put their body in there, uh, cold side, Hot side, you know, two hides, um, you know, the substrate mix we talked about, you know, the 50-50 blend, cypress mulch, and then jungle mix, 50-50, or you can do uh, cocoa husk and jungle mix. And once again, like using some type of moss, I like using terrarium moss because it smells good. <laughs> it smells better than the other moss and it lasts kind of long. So this, you know, terrarium moss can easily last about a little over a week. So maybe like a week and a half, two weeks. And then I usually will uh, change them out. So yeah, I feel we covered everything pretty much for the most part <laughs> on how I pretty much build out my Brazilian rainbow boa enclosure. Um, you can see this is an exoterra enclosure and this is like the double door i like this a lot because it's easy to feed them and easy to like to clean the enclosure rather than having to go on top but it does have uh you know you can go up top if you want to on these enclosures i personally don't because it helps me like not to forget to you know lock something down so i had one snake escape a long time ago and that was because i was always going on top and also using the double door and so it just, how you say, it, it opens you up to more uh, possibilities of you, oh, you know, leaving something open. So I like to kind of keep me consistent. I only open my enclosures from the front door. So that's just me personally. Um, maybe that could help you. <laughs> it's easy to, to lock this and to lock it back. And yeah, so that does it. And we're gonna let her get some sleep now. All right, fam, so we just hung out with Bowie, a little update on him. And then we just went over how I personally build out my Brazilian rainbow bows to enclosure. And I swear like her, her, uh, her husbandry is like on point. Uh, I swear and that, that substrate mix, I'll show you real quick. So this is that terrarium moss I was telling you about. Looks like this, this is what I get. And it's what, like seven bucks. And it lasts a while. Like I said, you just kind of rip off little pieces of it. And each time, you know, I would say I like, pretty much like you know, throw them away like after like a week and a half or so. Works really well because with that mix I was telling you about, what it does is it help, helps insulate that humidity, right? So the humidity is gonna rise up and that's, you know, so you have that terrarium moss and it really kind of like keeps that humidity and makes my life way easier. If I need to go away for like a day or two, you know, um, I'm not really worried uh, that my, my Brazilian rainbow bow is gonna like die or that the humidity is gonna drop so low, you know? So another thing too, right. this is just what that mix looks like. Like I told you, like I use forest floor and this is cypress mulch. Um, this stuff is great. You can use this or cocoa husk. I like cocoa husk too. The only thing with cocoa husk for me is that I feel like it dries out a little bit quicker than what I would like. Cypress mulch, I feel like cypress like holds, uh, Cypress holds humidity or holds like wetness, whatever. I don't like the word wetness because like that's not really what that is. It's not wet. Um, it just like holds humidity really well or moisture really well. So pretty much like with this, um, this with that cypress mulch like I was telling you about, 
it really helps your moisture and your humidity. And also putting something on top of your screen. I personally use plexiglass just because it looks cleaner. Um, some people will do like a wet towel or not wet towel. Some people put a towel over there. Some people put saran wrap. I've seen all different kinds of things. Um, those to me just look tacky, so I, I don't really do that. But um, yeah, a piece of cut plexiglass. Here's a little nasty one, but you know, you can get this at, um, I mean, like I said, like a Lowe's, Home Depot, and they'll cut it for you. So you just, all you gotta do is get your measurement. So measure half of the screen, right? So half of one of your screens or, you know, like just measure half of your screen, whatever you wanna do. I would say at least half, uh, and then you just place it on top, you know, that's it. Uh, and it really, for me, it does a really good job keeping humidity in, right? So it's not just like one thing on its own. It's like all these things together, like really, really help or helps modify these like glass enclosures. Cause these glass terrariums, man, I'm telling you, like they can like drop with the humidity like so fast. Like, you know, I remember like when I first got, when I, my, my first ball python I had, or my first snake was a ball python. So the first one I had, like when I was trying to understand humidity, it was pain in the butt, but Man, I eventually found the way. And I just really wanna share that with you guys. So, uh, cause humidity is like half the battle. I feel like, you know, once you're able to get your husband on point, you know, your animal is gonna be super chill. You know, uh, it's not gonna be stressful for you. And then, you know, you're gonna have a beautiful enclosure. So, I feel like I always say this too. Um, this is kind of a part of it. Uh, I highly recommend um, using one of these. So this is an infrared gun. You can get one on Amazon. Also make sure you get a, uh, um, a thermostat i showed you my thermostat earlier in that and that's once again that's what you know restricts your heat so it won't allow your heat to pass you know whatever you set it to i set mine to 82 for my brazilian room above so it won't go past 82 degrees um and so yeah it's really important to have that plus this helps gauge your temperatures right so if you want to get an accurate reading it really helps and if you do celsius or fahrenheit whatever works for you um also for feeding, this is so important for feeding. If you're doing frozen thaw, which I highly recommend, um, you know, this helps you determine, you know, the temperature of your rodent. Otherwise you're kind of guessing and guessing you're not going to be consistent. And so just highly recommend this. It makes your life easier. So great tool to have. Um, I would say a water bottle like this, that can, you know, a good misting water bottle. You can get one of these at one thing like Home Depot or like a flower shop, you know, these things cost about like five eight bucks roughly. Um, and then, you know, just have a different bottle for, this is like my cleaning bottle. And um, whenever I, I clean their enclosures, but there's nothing, there's no chemicals in here. It's just, uh, what's it called? Um, chlorexidine, I think. And so it's not, oh, I'm sorry, it's nothing toxic in here, I should say, um, but it does have a clean solution in it, but it's non-toxic, so it's okay. But I always do, I always recommend a different bottle just so you don't get it mixed up with your, you know, your misting bottle. So this is like red. So this is a clear uh, indicator. This is not my misting bottle for me personally. So um, I've heard of stories, people accidentally misting their enclosure with chemicals. Uh, and that's why I don't use chemicals. Just in case if I accidentally make that mistake, it's gonna be okay. Um, but some people, once again, do put chemicals like bleach, for example. I did come across a story where a person had bleach in theirs and then they missed it down their enclosure with bleach, thinking that it was missed. And they realized quickly, because you can smell the bleach, like, oh crap, this is actually bleach. And so they're able to save their animal in that situation. But, you know, once again, just kind of doing a different bottle can help you. All right. So, yeah. Oh, last but not least, hand sanitizer. Make sure you always have a bottle of hand sanitizer. Uh, you're handling snakes. Snakes do carry bacteria and all kind of, all different kinds of things. Um, also, if you were to get bit, uh, if you were to get bit like a hunger bite, like where they were to try to constrict you, you know, putting a little bit of hand sanitizer in the side of their mouth will make them instantly release it because they hate the taste of alcohol. Go figure. <laughs> Hopefully, those little tricks and uh, tools will help you with your enclosure that you're trying to build out for your Brazilian rainbow boa. Um, and yeah, so I think if you do these steps, whatever, uh, you should be fine, honestly. I don't see how you have an issue. Um, then again, you know, maybe you live in a different climate. I don't know. Uh, I live in Southern California, so it's a little bit different on here. However, our humidity is so low here. So it's really hard keeping animals with high humidity if you don't have the right tools, right? And so like, that's why I was able to find a way <laughs> that worked for my animals. 
and it works very successful. So give it a try. Let me know how it worked out for you. Uh, and yeah, so that does it, fam. Thanks for watching. Black Hippie out. Much love. Peace.